Hello and welcome back to Sportsman 101. Today I'll be sharing with you my favorite way and as far as I'm concerned the best way to use the Arbogast Jitterbug. Now if you aren't familiar with these guys, they're best known for their top water wobbling action and the bubbling sound that they emit. Fish go crazy over these things, most especially northern pike and largemouth bass. Now it is important to say that there really is no wrong way to fish with a jitterbug. You can use these things as a popper, you can cast and retrieve, you can do a combination of both. But my favorite way, the way I've always had the best results, is to just kick back, relax, and drag it behind a boat near the shore along weed lines. I'm able to cover a lot more area, it gives the fish more time to hone in on the lure, and it's much easier on the casting arm. And since these lures do their best work when they're being pulled around one and a half miles per hour, this can be done from a kayak, canoe, or even a rowboat. The footage you're seeing here is the highlights of my dad and I doing just this. We caught 25 northern pike in a period of about six hours. Hit after hit after hit. We went out twice and fished the three hours before dark each time. And that really is the best time to use most topwater baits. Typically early morning or evening is best. Now it did take a little convincing to get dad to put down his favorite jigs for a few hours and give this a try. But he certainly did not regret it and loved all the action we got. He even declared that we need to do the jitterbug troll more often. But I'll never be able to fully convert him to top water because he loves his walleyes too much. So I do have some tips for you guys out there that might want to give this a try. Like I mentioned earlier, we found that the optimum speed for a jitterbug is somewhere around 1.5 miles per hour. But you'll know when you're doing it right when the lure wobbles from side to side and you hear it make a very audible bubbling noise. Fishing with it on calmer water allows for best results. Now we were fishing with two jitterbugs and when we started out I thought that one bug being in front of the other would make a difference on which bait got more strikes. I was very surprised that the lure's positioning didn't matter at all. But what did matter was the color. Color was everything. So if you'll also be using two jitterbugs, start out with a couple different colors and then make the switch if one bug is getting all the hits. For example in our case, I started out with black and dad started out with a frog pattern. More than 80% of the hits were on black the first night we went out. And being the guy I am, I went to town the following morning and got dad a black jitterbug to use too. That evening, the pike hit both lures equally, regardless of the lure position. The best part about fishing like this is not only can you see your lure at all times and steer it right along the weed line, but you can see the fish hit it too. If a fish strikes but misses your jitterbug, don't let it just sit still. Too many times the fish loses interest and you'll rarely get a second hit. I don't know why others recommend letting topwater lures sit after a fish misses them. To be honest, it has never ever worked for me. The illusion of fleeing prey triggers that predatory instinct in fish, so use that to your advantage. Keep that jitterbug moving with the boat until that fish is hooked. Pike will chase it and hit it one, two, and even three times when it's moving. Oh, and don't forget to use a wire leader if you're expecting some pike or musky to show up. Leaders don't affect the action of these lures and will prevent you from losing your favorite jitterbug. As you can see here, Dad forgot a leader and got bit off. But the fishing gods were smiling that day and he got a miraculous second chance. So we lost Dad's black jitterbug because it got bit off. We went around for another pass and guess what we found floating on the water? <laughs> <laughs> lucky, <Well>. lucky. <laughs> so are you going to use a leader now? I got a leader. Okay, <laughs> good. <laughs> Guys, I'd like to thank you for watching this video. Please like, comment, and hit that subscribe button if you'd like to see more content like this. I'm going to keep this highlight reel going for those of you out there that want to see two guys having the time of their lives. But I will see you in the next video. Get out there and go catch yourself a big one. And Dad, when I tried this last year, what did you say it sounded like? You don't remember? No, it was last year. <laughs> you said it sounded like a baby farting in a bathtub. <laughs> oh, now it sounds like me farting in a bathtub. <laughs> oh, it's like a little one. Oh, goodness.
You win the prize for the big one. The biggest northern. <laughs> that truly is a hammer handle northern. Got him? All right. Yeah, we got him. Nice. Yeah, something else in his mouth too. Yeah. A jig. It's my jig. You want to see that? Your dad gets a free jig. <laughs> <laughs> so when you find tackle inside a fish's mouth, it's always going to be lucky because you know it works. <laughs> <laughs> there, he released himself. <laughs> Those are the easy ones. <laughs> so you like this better than uh, jig fishing? It's close. It's close. It's a lot of fun. It's, it's been a blast. It's easy fishing. <laughs> this is the first time I've seen you use topwater lures. If I ever caught a walleye doing this, I'd be hooked for life. Ha, 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 ha.